Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, we're going to talk about how to make blurry backgrounds. So before we jump in, if you haven't already, please do remember to press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. Okay, so today I wanted to go into our garden to talk to you guys about how to make blurry backgrounds. And to do this, we're gonna use Alfie. Alfie is here and uh, we're gonna use a tripod and some lenses. So we're gonna talk through this from start to finish about all the things that affect blurry backgrounds. The first thing that we're going to discuss is aperture. Now if you haven't already please do go ahead and watch the exposure triangle video. The exposure triangle video should talk you through exactly what aperture is. Essentially it's the size of the hole in the middle of the lens. The smaller the f number the bigger the hole and the smaller the f number the blurrier the background but there's more to it than that. So let's jump straight in with the first lens. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with 24 mil, okay? Every single time we change something on this, uh, this particular video, we're going to be staying at f2.8 throughout. So the aperture is never going to change. And what we're looking for is the blurriness of the background. So you're currently watching me at 24 mil at f4. We're going to switch around so that you can see what I see through the camera. Okie coke. So on the screen right now, you can see the settings that we've got going on. So we've got one 250th of a second, f2.8, ISO 1000. We'll switch through that. That's just a custom preset that I have on, uh, normal settings for everything. So you can see that we're too bright. Let's bang our histogram up on here. So you can see that we've got a peak at the side of the frame. So we're too bright. So we're going to just whiz, sorry, keeping that at 2.8. We're just going to whiz our uh, shutter speed up to compensate for it. I'm not going to go much further than that, just there should be absolutely fine. So at this aperture we can't get too much lower down than we are now but you guys can see everything that we've got in the background so it's quite a wide field of view. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a very brief demonstration about what we're going to do today. Essentially, there's multiple different things that affect the blurriness of a background, as it were. So one of the main things is the distance from the subject to you and the subject to whatever is behind them. So the background over here is actually about 40 meters away. So it's quite a long way. So it's 40 meters to the hedge line over here. I'm not going to go all the way there, but it's quite far. So on a 24 mil lens on a full frame camera, which is what we've got set up over there, there's quite a big gap between you and there. And if we want Alfie to be sat as a headshot, a portrait as it were, then we need him to actually be quite close to the camera. So what we'll do is we'll bring Alfie over here and set him up at headshot level. Come here, come here, sit, wait. That is a headshot the focus point on him and you can see the background there. If you look at how far away he is from the lens you'll be able to see that actually compared to how far away the background is there is a massive massive difference in the relative ratio but we're at 24 mil so there's no background compression and actually there is lateral distortion so Alfie's head looks a little bit longer than it actually is in real life because he's at this level so what we're going to do is we're going to do a headshot again we're going to keep the camera in the exact same place and we're going to move the focal length to be at 50 mil so the focal length has switched to 50 mil. We'll put him so that he's the same size-ish in the frame. Good boy puppy, where is your ball? So for about the same size in the frame, at 50 mil, he needs to be a little bit further back from the camera. So the relative distance between the camera and him, and him and the background, is actually still quite a big difference. There's a substantial difference in that ratio. So the background is still quite blurry. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say that we had beautiful bokeh, um, but it is quite blurry. So let's see what happens if we go to 70 mil, keeping the camera in the same place. So again, a rough estimation here of the distances. You can see that actually the background has come uh, in quite a lot. It looks a lot closer than it did when we were at 24 mil. And that's one of the main differences as you increase in the focal length. 
so I've just decided to go for a wander, which is fine because he's cute so he's allowed but the background looks like it's moved in a lot closer we've got none of our side fence in here there's just the back line so the difference in how many distractions you have in shot changes dramatically and the background looks blurrier even though I've moved him further away from the camera it's a little bit closer now go back you put him up can you put him up wow so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch so we've got the 70 to 200 lens on and repeat and you'll see a massive change happen when we do this. Okie dokie. So we've popped on the 70 to 200 mil. So the 70 to 200 is on there now. It is sat at 70 mil. Don't worry too much about what the histogram and the settings are saying at the moment. Um, you can just see, obviously, at the moment it's focused on the tree line in the background and not on anything in front. But the focal lens was exactly the same. So let's set him up to a similar profile and then start to increase the focal length. The sun has just come out, gloriously bright sunshine there. That's kind of worked back up. Good, sit, sit. Good, that's pretty much where we were last time. Um, so super bright. We'll bring the uh, sh shutter speed up, sorry and um, we can get a pretty good understanding, good boy waiting. So let's go ahead and move in to 135 mil and we'll set him back. You can see now the complete change that we've just had and the distance weight between the camera and him and him in the background is still a massive difference there. There's still a huge difference, but we've got a completely non-distracted background now. We've got complete separation from the background and it looks like a pretty good shot. What we'll do is we'll go into 200 mil, reset, and we'll see what difference that's made. Good boy waiting. So at 200 mil, I guess you guys can maybe see why I like this focal length so much now. It's a beautiful rendition in the background there. If there was light coming through those trees, it would be huge, big bokeh circles. And Alfie is doing such a fab job. Good boy, waiting. So he's sat waiting there like an absolute little legend. And you can see the difference, the separation that we've got there. So if you compare that to 24 mil, you can see the massive difference that focal length has and the distance that he is from the background is still huge. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay at 200 mil, but we're going to move a lot closer to the background. We're going to try and frame it the same way and see the difference. So if you just take note of how far Alfie is away from the background now, he's maybe 25 meters now away from the background. So we're going to close that gap and see the difference it makes. So you can see we've closed down the gap. Wait. So he is about halfway between the camera and the background. And you can see that we've lost the fluffiness of the background here. It's still good separation. We're at 2.8. It's okay. Let's close it a bit more and you'll see why the distance from the background is vital. So we've lost the nice background now. The background looks rubbish. And the reason for that, guys, is the distance between him and the background in relation to me and him. So there's much bigger gap between me and him than him and the background. And that relative distance is so important. So he can be this far away from the camera up at that end of our paddock and it'll be absolutely fine because the distance between the him and the background is massive. And that really is how to get blurry backgrounds. It's all to do with the relative distances. So whatever the focal length, you just need to have a big relative distance. But the longer the focal length, the better your backgrounds, realistically speaking. So that's it guys. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please do remember to drop a note in the comments below. Please do press the subscribe button and click the bell icon. The bell icon will give you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. You will hopefully think that Alfie's behavior has been exceptional today. He's my little onion. Mind you, my little onion. Thank you. Just remember when you're thinking about your distances to ensure that there is a big distance between the subject and the background compared to the distance between you and the subject. If you do that, then you'll be absolutely fine. If you haven't already, please do remember to join us on Instagram because we're on Instagram, aren't we? We are. Do a hand. Wowie, good boy. Okay, good lad. And we'll see you again really, really soon.